everyone, my name is Miranda, but you probably know me better by my Instagram name, at Mother of Surpants. A common question that's brought up whenever I do the Ask Me Opinions or Ask Me Questions on my Instagram story is my opinion on spider ball pythons. And I thought that this would be a very interesting video to make for the purpose that this is something that's highly, highly debated within the reptile community. It's pretty controversial and I really just wanted to talk about it. I'm also going to be dipping into the topic of irresponsible breeding and what that is. And that is where my girl, Cookie, my super cinnamon ball python, is going to tie into some of this. Spider is a morph of ball python that kind of thins out the pattern and gives lightning bolt type patterns on the snake itself. Um, they're a very, very pretty snake, highly, highly coveted. They make very gorgeous combos, but there is something that some of you may have heard of called the wobble, which is prominent in every single spider morph. If you're not familiar with what waddle is, it's a neurological issue that causes equilibrium failure within the snake's brain. This means that the snake cannot tell when it is upside down, right side up, or sideways. A lot of times they will spin, shake, and you'll find them lying upside down in their enclosures, and this can be... And this can be incredibly scary if you're a new keeper and don't know what's happening. So the first spider that was ever taken out of Africa had wobble in it and that is where the issue comes up. It is not the result of inbreeding, it was just linked to that one specific spider, but since every single other spider is linked ancestrally to that one, that means that every single spider produced in captivity will have wobble. Wobble cannot be outbred. If you have one snake that does not display signs of wobble, you could breed it and it can produce offspring that have the worst wobble you have ever seen. The severity is not genetic, it's the condition itself that is genetic, and that's what makes it so difficult when breeding them. Wobble can also go away and show up at any time. Every single spider ball python has wobble. Sometimes it won't be very evident or prominent until later in life. Sometimes the snake will have severe wobble and then it'll suddenly go away or not be as prominent anymore. I don't think there's really any conclusions as to why this is. It just is something that happens. It can be sometimes very difficult to get spider ball pythons to feed, and the reason for this is because they cannot strike properly. A lot of times they will miss the prey and go around it. It's very common that keepers who have spiders and feed them with tongs may get tagged just because the spider cannot control or knows where it's going. So this begs the question, why is a morph that has so many issues so popular? Why do people continue to breed it? Well, there's a few arguments for that. The first one is that a lot of breeders will argue that there's no evidence that it affects the spider's quality of life. They don't have shortened lifespans, a lot of them still can successfully feed, and there are no signs that the snake is in lots of pain, there's really nothing to indicate that other than the wobble they are in any sort of distress or that they really know what's going on because that's all that they know. If spiders weren't as popular, would people still wanting to breed them and sell them if they had these neurological issues? Or is it just because that these are only snakes, is that the reason why people are so okay with it? If this was prominent in a mammal who was shaking and spinning and couldn't tell what was left, right, up, or down, would people still be saying that it was ethical to keep breeding it? Of course not. The argument that breeders who continue to breed spiders are just profiting off a of disability, that knowingly breeding spiders is unethical, and that it should no longer be done, there are a lot of people who are starting to believe that spiders should be pet only. I am friends with a breeder who used to breed tons of spider ball pythons, but then after a clutch or two where she had to cull hatchlings because they were had such severe wobbles that they could not start on feed, she sold all of her spiders to pet only homes and she no longer breeds them. I used to have a desert spinner blast ball python, his name was Cosmo. If you don't know what spinner blast is, it is a spinner spider. He did have wobble. It was evident when I first picked him up and got him out of his enclosure and he was a little startled. It was evident during feeding. And although it didn't hinder his feeding at all, it was definitely noticeably harder for him to strike the prey than my other snakes. I did not get rid of him because of his wobble. I just had to move and downsize my collection. What are my personal thoughts on the spider wobble? Well, personally, I would never choose to breed them. I have conflicting feelings about whether or not I think it's ethical. I know that people, regardless of everyone's feelings, are never going to stop because they are just so certain that it does not affect their quality of life and they make too much money off it, quite frankly. And the more I talk about it, I am against breeding and producing of spiders. I think that they are gorgeous, there's no denying that, but I think at this point I would never spend money on another spider. If I ever acquired one for a rescue, that would be one thing. Everyone really is going to do, in the end, what they want to do, regardless of one person's opinion, and I know that multiple people do share my opinion that spiders should not be reproduced and they will never choose themselves to make any spiders, but that does not mean that anyone's going to stop. 
Unfortunately, they're just too popular. I believe that if the spider lost its popularity and people weren't buying into them as much, then that might be a different story as far as people deciding not to sell them anymore. It should also be mentioned that two spiders should never be bred together. The superform produces an all-white snake that is lethal. There are no living super spider combos. They are a lethal combo, and this is where I start to want to get into irresponsible breeding. There are certain morphs that are known to have genetic issues besides spiders, and one of them happens to be the super cinnamon ball python. So the common super cinnamons are kinking of the spine, bug eyes, and duck billing. Although Cookie here is a perfect specimen, he does not have any of these things. So many super black pastel and super cinnamon ball pythons are culled due to the fact that they have these deformities. Now what the bug eyes are is pretty self-explanatory. Their eyes are a lot larger than normal. The duck billing means that instead of just a prominent snoot, it'll kind of fan out and look like a duck bill. I will attach some pictures for those who are curious of what it may look like. It is also sometimes common for them to be born without eyes, and it is very common to have such severe kinking that the animal cannot live and needs to be called immediately. Now, a lot of breeders are saying that if you willingly breed two cinnamons, two black pastels together, trying to get an all-black snake, that that is irresponsible breeding because you know the risks coming with it that you might have to cull an entire clutch of snakes because you tried to make this all-black snake. Is culling an entire clutch really worth it just trying to get a certain morphs? Are morphs really that worth it? There are also people that argue that if you incubate the snake eggs of super black pastels and super cinnamons at a lower temperature, that they will not have these issues, that they are a lot less likely to be kinked. I've spoken to breeders who have tried to produce clutches of super cinnamons and super black pastels, end up having to cull all of them and then don't tell anyone because they don't want to be seen as someone who is breeding irresponsibly. Caramel albinos are also linked to kicking as well. I don't know as much about caramel albinos as I do about cinnamon and black pastel, so I'm not really going to talk too much about that because quite frankly I'm not as educated. And I am going to make another video that's all about genetic defects and just snake genetics in general to try to clear up any questions and just go over a lot of other issues within morphs. I got Cinnamon Girl here from a breeder who quite frequently produces healthy clutches of super cinnamons and super black pastels, Bruce Tague. I have emailed and corresponded with him about his success with breeding these, and he has said that he has really never had any sort of issue with them. I believe he said that he hasn't had to call any, if very few. There is a line of black pastel called the ENG line. Supposedly, if you breed two ENG black pastel line ball pythons together, you'll not receive any kinked offspring. They will all be healthy. Super black pastels and super cinnamon are always going to be in high demand. Should we continue trying to breed these snakes together, trying to produce all black ones, if we know that the offspring could be severely deformed and have to cull all of them? Obviously, I love super cinnamons and super black pastels. They're one of my favorite morphs, and I did the beginning want to breed Cookie, but now I'm having second thoughts. I don't want to cull an entire clutch. I would rather breed her to something else, like a ghost, and make some cinnamon hypos. Combos that I know aren't going to have any issues, and I think that something in the reptile hobby is really good. If you know that you want to breed, start out with babies, because a lot of times your plans are going to change for things like this. I had always wanted to produce super cinnamons and eight balls and super black pastels, However, now that I know more about it, I don't know if that's something that I'm going to do at this point in time. Because honestly, I just don't want to cull an entire clutch for something that I worked so hard for. I just can't imagine doing that. And I can't imagine breeding Cookie, knowing that her offspring, all of them might die. I just think that that is horrible. And I know that there are some breeders who are more than okay with this, but people don't see all the work and love that goes into these guys. These snakes are my babies, <laughs> hence the name Mother of Serpents. And I really do care about them and I want to put the animal first. And I'm always curious to hear people's opinions. I don't want to think that throughout this video I was attacking anyone. I was just kind of stating facts and lightly going into my opinions. I don't want to have beef with anyone who decides to breed spiders or continues to breed super cinnamons and super black pastels. I was just kind of stating my opinion and the facts, hoping that people will be able to draw their own conclusions one way or another. I think that about wraps it up. Let me guys know your opinions on this. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. See you guys next time.